let's talk about relationships a relationship is nothing but uh, you know association among entities what is the relationship between you know two entities that is going to be decided by the relationship right so how do we get uh, whether we have to put a relationship or not again from the description right so in the requirement analysis phase we are going to get the verbal description in the description wherever you find a verb that is going to be translated as a relationship right let us say um, you know while you have collected this uh, uh, requirements let us say that user said that an employee works for an uh, you know department now employee is a uh, entity and department is an entity and works for his relationship right let's take an example and see how it looks like um, say this is the entity set and this is the department set and this is the employee entity okay and this is the department right employee entity type and department entity type this is the employee set and this is the department set now they said that in the verbal description let us say the you know the requirement analysis is like this in the requirement analysis phase they clearly mentioned that every employee works for a department okay and a department can have many employees right and let us say one more constraint is new department need not have any employee right if this is what you have written down which means in your conversation with the users as a as a database designer when you are collecting the requirements you know you have jotted them down and they said that every employee has to work for definitely one department and exactly one department okay every employee works for exactly one department which means he he cannot work for more than one department exactly one department and a department can have many employees and a newly formed department it need not have any uh, employees right then how are you going to have the relationship so choose a meaningful name right so since i am writing the employee here and i am writing the department here right writing works for makes sense that's it that is the meaning of the name right so now an employee works for the department if i have written department here and employee here then what i'll write is a department employees and employee right so name you can choose it depending on the placement it it has to be meaningful that's it there is no hard and fast rule you can even have you know some name for here like a b c but it doesn't make sense you have to make the er diagrams as as readable as possible whoever even the name user sees it he should be able to understand what you are trying to do okay now uh, let us say we have employees like this e1 e2 e3 e4 e5 e6 right let me represent using these dots these dots represent each dot represents an employee right and let us say we have various departments um d1 d2 d3 like this okay three department now every relationship here in this relationship type this is relationship type this is employee type and this is the department type right so every every relationship in the relationship type is actually an association between employee and department right so how is it if employee e1 works for department d1 then we are going to join these two in this relationship type in this relationship got it therefore this relationship is a combination of you know one entity from here and other entity from here got it and what about this one let us say employee e2 also works for department d1 then employee e2 
and department D1 will be combined here, right? Which means this relationship is actually a combination or association of, you know, one entity from here and one entity from here. Let us assume that E3 is also working for department D1. Then one more relationship will be formed by taking one entity from here and one entity from here, right? In the same way, if these three are working for D2, then I am combining them, right? So every relationship is formed by taking two entities. Understood this? Let us say he is also working for D2 itself. Now we are going to talk about some few things, some few characteristics of the relationship. So now works for the relationship. So one characteristic is degree. So degree is nothing but in every relationship, right? How many entity sets are participating? So one entity set is employee and other entity set is department. So in this relationship, we are having two entities participating, right? That is why this relationship is also called as binary relationship, binary, right? And the degree is two. So degree of this relationship is 2, right? And there are various other things. One is called as cardinality ratio. Cardinality ratio. Um, see, coming to this cardinality term, it is not actually the same term as, uh, you know, set theory cardinality. Actually, cardinality is the number of elements in a set, isn't it? But here, when I talk about uh, ER diagrams, the term cardinality ratio denotes what is the maximum number of relationships in which an entity can participate again cardinality ratio says what is the maximum number of relationships maximum number of relationships in which an entity can participate for example if you look at this e1 right he can participate only in one relationship and he is not participating in any of the relationship, isn't it? Therefore, what is the cardinality of employee? The cardinality of employee is 1, isn't it? Because every entity in employee is participating only in one relationship, right? And what about the cardinality of department? See this, every department is participating in more than one relationship, isn't it? Therefore, whenever, a, you know, the, part, the department, you know, uh, one department or one entity participates in many uh, relationships it is many right therefore we use m or n to de you know, denote it therefore cardinality of employee is one and cardinality of department is n got it and one more thing is participation participation or existence participation or existence constraint so these two are called as structural constraints structural constraints okay now what is participation is um, minimum so when cardinality says what is the maximum number of relationships a entity can participate this participation says what is the minimum number of uh, you know uh, relationships a entity can participate sometimes this participation is also called as minimum cardinality cardinality is nothing but maximum and sometimes when it is also referred to as minimum cardinality because it discusses about how many minimum relationships a entity can participate right now if you watch this in this one what is the minimum number of uh, you know relationships in which each entity can participate each entity entity has to participate in at least one isn't it therefore minimum is one right and what about this one the minimum number of uh, you know uh, entities in which it can participate is actually zero the reason is if you look at this newly formed department d3 it is not participating in any of the relationships therefore participation is zero are you understanding this so the degree of this relationship is 2 because in this relationship two entities are involved and then cardinality is the maximum number of uh, you know relationships an entity can be present so the maximum number of relationships that depends on the you know type of verbal specification see how did we derive this 
we derive this everything from the verbal specification of the you know uh, this requirement analysis they said that every employee has to participate in exactly one uh, has to work for at least one and exactly one department that is why the cardinality of e1 is one i mean this employee is one right and what about the cardinality of this one they said that a department can have many employees therefore the maximum number of relationships this can this can participate is n got it and now uh, what about the minimum that depends on whether they are participating at all or not right if you look at this we have a constraint saying that uh, you know at least uh, every depart every employee has to work for at least one department or he has to work for exactly one department which means there should not exist any employee with who is not working with any department right that is why it is also sometimes called as existence constraint which means the employee is having a constraint of existence he cannot exist if he shouldn't if he doesn't work for a department right so from that we got the existence uh, you know constraint to be one here and what about this here i got zero because they said that a new department need not have any employees right so from the verbal description you are supposed to draw everything right in the exam they might give you this entire verbal description and then they'll ask you what is the cardinality what is the participation or what is the degree of it now uh, this is this is all about uh, you know uh, this entity type and entity set representation but coming to this er diagrams we are not going to use these sets right we use completely different representations generally entities will be represented by rectangles and relationships will be represented by diamonds right so let us say this is the employee entity type and this is the department entity type and this is the works for works for relation right so one way to represent it is one one popular way or you know most of the cases we are going to represent it this way see we know that cardinality of uh, employee is one right and the cardinal we know that uh, okay so we, we know these two things one you know cardinality of employee is one which means the maximum number of relationships in which an entity of employee participate is one and the maximum number of relationships in which a department can participate is n but when we are writing this we will not write one and n here we write n here and one here okay even though department cardinality is one an employee cardinality is here it is n and it is 1 we are going to write n here and 1 here and we are not going to write anything here got it so this is how it is represented so what does it mean department to employee is 1 is to n ratio the cardinality ratio from department to employee is 1 is to n, 1 is to n what does it what does it mean department to employee is 1 is to ma 1 to many function it means that one department can have many employees one to many right and what about the participation the participation is department is not going to participate in a relationship which means it is it, it is not guaranteed that every department is going to participate in a relationship right why new departments need not have any employees but then every employee has to participate in a relationship because every employee should work for a department in that case we are going to write like this right so if it is total total participation we are going to use double lines and if it is partial participation we are going to use single lines what is partial if some of the entities are not participating in the relationship then it is called partial this is called total participation what is total participation if all the entities of this set are participating in the relationship then that is called total participation right and this representation is also called as cardinality ratio single line double line single line double line representation of er diagram it is it is quite popular and used as used at many places and one more representation which is also popular is this one without using single line double line we use the minimum maximum representation the same er diagram can be represented in other way like this so one side we are going to have employee and other side we are going to have department entity and we are going to have a relationship right and this relationship is works for okay 
now we are going to have within brackets on either sides what is minimum and what is maximum right so on one side i'm going to have minimum and maximum minimum and maximum right so here see this what is the minimum participation of this minimum cardinality of employee every employee is going to participate in at least one relationship i already told you right see why because every employee is supposed to work for at least one department that is what is given therefore minimum part minimum coordinate cardinality is one here right and what about the minimum cardinality of department every department is supposed to have uh, you know it may need not have any employee at all therefore minimum cardinality is zero here right and what about the maximum cardinality here and every employee can work for any employee can work for only you know maximum of one department therefore maximum number of relationships employee can participate is one what about department a department can have many employees so maximum number of uh, you know relationships a department can participate is n right so this is called as minimum maximum representation min max representation got it and both are quite popular so in exam they might give you anything right and in you know this is easy to draw but it it can represent more information like you know sometimes what happens is this one can represent only partial or total and this one can represent if it is minimum how many is minimum for example let us say an employee has to work for minimum two departments right then we are we are going to represent two here got it so sometimes in minimum maximum representation we can even represent more information compared to this uh, single line double line representation because if i have minimum uh, you know cardinality ratio as let us say 2 and maximum cardinality ratio as n or uh, uh, let us say n right then what does it mean it means that this particular entity has to participate in at least two right now if i represent this in terms of single line double line representation even though the minimum number of uh, you know participations is 2 it will still consider it as a total participation and it will just represent it using a double line so more information can be represented using minimum maximum uh, you know representation compared to this uh, single line double line representation but both are quite popular understood this is this is one type of relationship which is actually one to n so only confusing thing here is i uh, you know when you write this one this type of single line double line representation even though you know the maximum participation or the cardinality of department is n right and the cardinality of employee is 1 while you write the numbers you write 1 here and n here because it looks logical that way see employee to department is many to one relationship isn't it many employees are related to one department or department to employee is one to many relationship therefore uh, you know it will be easy for you to understand if you write that way even though this is the one who is participating in you know maximum one and maximum n while we write the numbers we write it this way so that it will be easy for anyone to read it and understand it got it um yeah they, these are the important points and degree is two right sometimes what happens is along with this entity types we even give the role name in every relationship every entity plays a role for example this employee entity plays a role of employee and this department entity plays a role of employer isn't it department is employing an employee therefore you can even give it a role name right so role names are not uh, very useful in case of this kind of relationships sometimes we have recursive relationships which means a relationship will be defined on same set two times in that case the same set is going to act as two different roles in that case we are going to have role names okay i'll take an example and i'll discuss about that right so just understand these things it is it is uh, you know enough for this for this example we take more examples and see other points okay